I guess uh, it's a good time to cover the last paper in reinforcement learning in this course. The field is huge. There is no way that we can, we are able to cover everything, but we covered a good deal of topics. Let's go back to model-free deep reinforcement learning. You had two different frameworks. One was policy optimization. The other one was value optimization using your Q networks. The policy optimization, they suffer because you need to have, you need to collect a lot of observations. So you need to interact with your environment a lot. It has a very high sample complexity. The value type of frameworks, they are very sensitive to the choice of your hyperparameters. So you need to do a lot of hyperparameter tuning. So is there a way to benefit from the best of the two worlds? And that's the topic of soft active critic. A quick recap of the notation so that the notation is in place. You have an infinite horizon mark of decision process. S is your state space. It could be continuous. A is your action space. It could be continuous. You have your transition probability that takes you from a pair of a state and an action to the next state. You have some reward. It's bounded reward. So you're not going to collect infinite reward for some of your actions or minus infinite penalty. So it's bounded. This is that state marginal of the trajectories. This is the distribution that we never see it when you're coding on your computer. This is a just for mathematical convenience that we carry it around. This is based on your policy. And then you can have a similar probability for your actions, it's pairs of state and action. What we are going to do here is maximum entropy reinforcement learning. What is that? Previously, your objective was to maximize your expected future reward. Now you're incorporating directly that you want to maximize the entropy as well in your objective. So one thing to mention, this is different from what you are doing here. Here, you are maximizing your expected reward, but then to encourage exploration, you would just add the entropy, the gradient of the entropy. So what we are doing here is totally different. So what you're doing here is directly incorporating uh, that entropy inside your objective. So it's gonna be part of your reward. You're updating your reward. You're gonna end up having a Q function, but it's gonna be a different Q function that you're used to. It's gonna be a soft Q function. And I'm gonna tell you what that is. You're still gonna have that Bellman equation, but then you have to prove that, yes, you have a Bellman equation for this problem. And let's say tau pi is your Bellman backup operator. We're going to use it. And then the Bellman backup operator, that's the definition. That's your reward plus gamma of uh, expected future values. And this is a soft state value function. Why is it soft? Where is the word soft coming from? It's coming from this entropy. So it's showing up in your Q or in your V. Okay. So this is the extra term that is complicating the mathematics a little bit. Can I but then, you? yes, go ahead. Um, is, so is the reason that, and I don't know if you'll explain this later, but is the reason that Q is considered soft the same reason that V is considered soft? Exactly, like yes. Log, okay. Because look at V, V for the next state, there is some log of the uh, policy that is gonna go inside V of the next state, okay? Yeah, thanks. Now you are gonna need some lemma. These types of lemma, we just use them for usual uh, reinforcement learning, but here you have to prove them actually. So in the appendix of the paper, you can find the proof for soft policy evaluation, which says that if you keep repeating this process over and over again, if you keep applying your Bellman backup operator over and over again, you're gonna converge to your soft Q value and then you're going to need to prove this lemma as well, soft policy improvement. What is that? If you minimize the KL divergence between the new policy that you're looking for and this exponential term, if you minimize that, it's going to give you a new policy. And that new policy has a higher soft value compared to the old policy. So you need to prove that as well. Where is this exponential coming in? It's coming in because of the KL divergence. There are some log terms in there and because of the log term coming up from your entropy. So if you read the proof, you're gonna see where exactly that exponential is coming in. 
And then you're going to be able to write down your soft policy iteration. So a policy iteration is what you need. It's the first step before you can do policy optimization. What is that? What is the theorem telling us? And it's going to be based on these two lemmas that if you keep repeating this process, soft policy evaluation and then soft policy improvement, one step of that, one step of this, one step of that, one step of this, that algorithm is going to converge. And it's going to give you a policy by a star that is the best, regardless of the other policy. And there are some constraints on what type of policies, what properties this capital pi has. So for that, you need to read the paper, but we are gonna use it in practice to give us the soft actor critic algorithm. What is that? You're gonna use neural networks because we are doing deep reinforcement learning. You're gonna have one neural network for your value function. So you're gonna have one neural network for your soft value function takes your state as an input and it's gonna give you the corresponding value, it's a scalar. You're gonna have another neural network for your soft Q to approximate this other function here. And then you're gonna have yet another neural network, which is gonna give you a policy. And then you're gonna have multiple objective functions. And where are they coming from? From these theorems and these mathematics and those definitions. What is that? The objective function for psi, for this value, is coming from this definition v minus the expected value of your actions with respect to your policy. Assuming that you know theta and phi, you can write down that objective and minimize it. For your Q, it's very similar to before. You have your Q network and then you have some targets. You do mean a squared error. Where is the target coming from? It's coming from your reward, which is here. And it's basically what you have in your Bellman equation. It's your new Bellman equation. So this lemma here corresponds to your Bellman equation, your updated Bellman equation. And it's coming from your Bellman backup operator. So here you're assuming that you know your psi or the same way that you had an exponentially moving average for your target, you can have the same thing here. And this is the first paper that we covered. There is some Q network. The policy, this is where the neat stuff is gonna happen. You have an objective, the KL divergence between your policy and your optimizing over fees. And it's coming from this uh, lemma up there. The cool thing here is that you can not only model the mean of your policy, you can model its variance. You can model its statistics using the reparameterization trick. And the reparameterization trick, we saw it when we were doing generative networks, variational autoencoders or GANs. We saw the reparameterization trick. It's showing up here again. That's where you're putting your neural network. So you can basically model the mean and the variance of a normal distribution by two neural networks. And then this last function here is very interesting. Once you write down, once you expand the KL divergence, there is some log of that probability, your policy. And then you can, you can keep sampling from the state and your epsilon your noise, push it through the definitions of your policy. That's gonna give you the first objective. This is fully differentiable. The other one is very interesting. This is also fully differentiable because Q is fully differentiable. So now your Q is helping you train your policy. And we saw this behavior before where we were doing a deep deterministic policy gradient where your Q network was helping you train new. And it was possible because Q was differentiable. So you have a similar behavior here. Actually, soft actor critic is a generalization of that. This is the algorithm. So there is no need for me to go through it. You have your environment. You, keep, you, you take your actions based on your policy. You create your data set. Once you have your data set, you keep optimizing these objectives. You optimize your value. You optimize your queue. And you optimize your policy. And then you keep a moving average of your size. And if you want to compare it, the soft actor critic, to the rest of the algorithms on a humanoid problem, this is deep deterministic policy gradient, the green one, and you're reporting the average return. This is the performance. This one we covered. The proximal policy optimization, PPO, is this brown line here. And the soft actor critic is converging much faster, giving you much better return. I think it's a good time to stop and let you guys ask questions. And for those of you who want to leave, you can leave. I'm curious, um, so sort of, uh, I guess, to like solve the 
the problems of model free RL, do you sort of pay in terms of like lots of parameters given that you have these three networks here? Does that end up being very sort of costly uh, parameter wise? So yes, you have a lot of parameters, you're right. So you're parameterizing your value function, Q function and your policy. But we were doing it anyways with other frameworks with proximal policy optimization or deep deterministic policy gradient, you are at least parameterizing your pi and q. So the only additional thing that you're parameterizing in this is this v, which I guess should be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no, we have been doing it for all of these methods as well. Okay. But the cool thing here is that this is not deterministic. Your policy is no longer deterministic anymore. And that is what is helping this framework uh, explore the environment better. So it's like a better exploration, exploitation sort of yes. ratio. Yeah. Interesting. But there is also another problem here. You don't know what is your alpha. These are, again, your hyperparameters that you need to fine tune. But it turns out that there are some studies in the paper that this framework is not that sensitive to the choice of alpha. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the only... I mean, besides like, you know, general optimization hyperparameters, is that the only uh, hyperparameter within sort of this framework? No, there are actually more. There is oh, okay. these learning rates, there is but sort the of, exponential. Yeah, but those are within sort of like the optimization framework, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And th those would be there for any like gradient descent, you know, or any, any optimization method, I guess. Yes, and the other thing that we didn't, covered that much in this course is your reward. For some of the problems like Atari games, you know your reward, it's being written on top of your screen. Or for a game like Go or chess, you know your reward. But when you go into more realistic settings, like what we covered in the previous paper with real robots, then defining this R, you have some flexibility there. Mm -hmm. So reinforcement learning is cool, but it's very hard to get it to work in practice. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure.